All right, Mr. Kurt, um, I want to talk about uh, this discussion we're having and also to some of uh, a couple of your viewers and their attitude about it. Now, I personally don't mind somebody telling me to relax and, you know, it's a good advice. Um, on the other hand, it really has little to do with our discussion. Uh, well, that's not right. It does have to do with our discussion, but, but here's how. In my view, I think this is important for me to try to express to you. See, I don't see that I'm attacking you or or uh, being closed-minded about your ideas or um, like uh, prejudging them, right? Uh, I just don't think that's the case, and I think I can demonstrate that that's not really that. That's just the defensive way to look at it. Not that you're looking at it that way, but you did call my view racist, as if I'm like uh, prejudiced, prejudiced uh, against it, like a racist is, uh, but against some spiritual ideas. And that's not true. Um, I'm post judist of these things. Um, and the thing is, you're saying uh, that you could create energy, and that you know this and stuff. So... How is it not okay for me to go, well, I know you can't, and I know that. And furthermore, I'm doing it from a spiritual point of view. It's not because it's physically impossible. I'm talking about what you're, you're conveying uh, psychophysiologically. Um, you want it to be free from some sort of a, a, an accountability. No, 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 no. It's being borrowed. Yes, I understand all that. Um, I understand that the energy always comes from somewhere. So I don't really know why anybody would hold on too strongly of the word free energy. Um, backing off of the word, but putting it in titles and backing off, it's not the same thing. Now, I'm not telling you that you need to back off of the word. No. If you're behind it, fine. But part well, part of being behind it is weathering the criticisms of people that have also thought that issue through. And um, I still believe in bountiful energy. So bountiful, it, it's like free. We've been through it before. We're living right now in an energy supply so bountiful that compared to the amount of energy we had before. What I object to is the infinite energy you know, that you can amplify a little bit of energy into a lot of energy. Amplifiers require energy. And um, I don't believe in laws of nature is not the right way to put it. I will call it the law of this or that because that's what they've been named. But really, we're talking about patterns in nature. And some of the patterns um, are very, very consistent. You know, it doesn't mean that we understand that pattern. Um, and we know in science there are edges and things to discover. But the conservation of energy, uh, and the conservation in general of real things, right? To me, reality is that which is conserved, right? It, that it transmutes, but it doesn't disappear or come from nowhere or infinite is not a number, it's not an amount, it's not even a potential. Like infinity comes, we, we often think of infinity as going way into the deep, a far away, infinite distance. We try to think of that. And such a distance doesn't necessarily even exist. But be that as it may, where we actually, if you trace the history of the idea of infinity, uh, as I have, then um, you may find what I found on my path of tracing that is that uh, the real foundation of infinity comes from breaking things into infinite number of pieces. That's where we really understand infinity best. And next to that is the like uh, the infinite summation and eventually integrals in which you have these infinite summations and maybe they do go to infinity um, in one of the coordinates, you know, in distance as well, but you treat it as um, similar to this division process. You treat there's a discrete stepwise nature to it. All right. 
Now, in physics right now, we have some super deep spiritual questions. Um, what is the world of possibilities? Uh, a guy pre-med just made a video that uh, is like the first person I've heard that just more or less directly stated my current theory for what's going on in terms of consciousness. Now, uh, the reductive principle is slippery because you can break something down and lose track of, oop, it's this system has the behavior. So below it, the behavior gets lost. All right, I still think the behavior is material, but you have to find the, the right level for it. <laughs> but if you take the, the big boundary set, it's like, like I could say um, there's, a, there's some explanation of how life came into the universe without knowing it. Why? Well, because life's here, and I believe that uh, somewhere in the universe is a better explanation than the one we have now, you know, or had a thousand years ago especially, but also than we have now. So, you know, I believe it's fundamentally discoverable. It can be turned into information, and in that process you'll falsify the, the whole reality of it, but uh, that's just called taking a cross-section, and that's how senses work, and so we can make this kind of progress. So looking at the whole... I can deduce there's information in there. Now, consciousness, whether it's, uh, I believe that we actually do have will. Um, freedom's not the right concept, I've learned. People don't understand the concept of free. You can't expect a bunch of uh, former slaves uh, to, um, to be emotionally cool with the, their emotions about the word free. Um, you know, that because obviously we're bounded, and, and this is a good thing, and the bounds are always permeable. That's sort of something that comes out of quantum mechanics, that they're always permeable in principle. But in practice, um, they can be reliable and provide bounds, and that's good, because that's what keeps the rain off our head, most of our heads, when it's falling outside. That's what makes us uh, create an inside that is really outside the body, you know, is that there is bounds. And though there's a quantum chance, you know, some of the water molecules are going to go through the wood and get into your house. There's statistics in proportion and amounts, see. So it's important that there's always sort of amounts. Um, and uh, so this transfer of energy in amounts through systems of molecules in which there's this quantum mechanics going on where yeah everything is possible but not equally possible see everything's possible but not equally possible on the other hand we know there's beautiful tricks that can be done like photosynthesis photosynthesis they've recently discovered like the last four years um, is happening because of a quantum mechanical process and put short basically the way the leaf is built by classical mechanics about two percent of the photon should make it to the maybe you know this should make it to the energy center I think we've talked about it I'm re-emphasizing it and I'm portraying it for in, in general within the context of this video but I know we've talked about these things but um, only two percent should you know turn into stored energy but it's more like 98%. It's more like the converse. So you can play games like that with quantum mechanics and take something that's supposed to happen 2% and, and uh, build a system that amplifies that, right? And um, so the problem is, if you want to make something macroscopic <coughs> out of materials like rubber bands and steel bands and elastic bands and wood or stone or crystals or... That's very well understood. We, we, we thought the whole universe worked like that for centuries. And uh, it doesn't. But if it did, there definitely would apply this law of thermodynamics that was invented to explain where the energy went. It's like energy just disappears. Well, it doesn't disappear. It turns into the heat, and heat is real energy. Granted, you could grab that heat and reuse it as energy, but you have to have a pretty clever plan, right? You know, you can't just say, well, there's going to be new ways to do energy, so I know the way, and that's what you're saying. And I find that spiritually, I don't know, oh Jesus. <laughs>